Over the last year, I've received several requests to take a look at Sway Window Manager, or Sway WM, and I've always been a little resistant to it because Wayland doesn't like me all that much, and everything, every time I try it, it just kind of goes wrong. So I've, I've been procrastinating on this video for a long time, but I'm finally going to do it today. We're going to take a look at Sway Window Manager, we're going to install it, we're going to configure it, and we're going to rice it. Or, we're at least going to do the first two things. We're going, to, we're going to try to rice it. We'll see how that goes. I've never actually done any ricing in Sway Window Manager, so we'll see how that goes. I'm com a complete noob at it, so just keep that in mind as we go along, because I'm sure there are going to be points here where you're looking at this video and like, this guy's a dumbass, but I'm sure that's quite common for those of you who watch most of my videos. I mean, it happens often. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we are in... MX Linux. So what distro you do this on pretty much doesn't matter. Sway seems to be in most repositories and I chose MX because A, I really like MX Linux, but also because I wanted to test out and see how much of the associated programs are actually in the Debian repositories. And it turns out there's quite a bit of what you need already in the repositories. You don't even have to build it yourself. So it's actually really good. So what we're going to do is open up a terminal here. And we'll zoom on, zoom in, and then we can go ahead and make this like full screen. Okay, so in order to install Sway on a Debian-based distro, you do sudo apt install Sway. Now, if you aren't you're on, on Arch, you'd go sudo pacman dash capital S Sway. If you want the Git version or the development version, you'd use the AUR version. I think that's probably dash Git. Uh, and I believe Sway is also in the Fedora repositories and probably OpenSUSE as well. So if you want to install Sway, it's very easy. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter here, enter our password, and let it install. Now, theoretically, we could log out now and log back into Sway. It would work. The problem is there's a few things that are missing and a few things that are wrong with the configuration files. So what we need to do is... First, copy the, config, the default configuration file from where it resides by default to our, configura our .config file. So in order to do that, we need to do cp slash etsy sway and then config. Actually, before we do that, we need to go through and uh, make directory uh, .config sway. And then we need to do this one here and uh, do this dot tilde slash dot config. If I can spell sway right, and enter. Okay, now if we cd into .config and sway and do an ls here, we can see we now have a configuration file. And if we vim into conf that configuration file, this is what it looks like. Now, if you've used i3 before, you'll notice that a lot of this stuff looks very, very similar. It's not precisely the same, but it does look familiar. Now, if you do have an i3 configuration file, it will work. It's not precisely the same, like there are some things that you're going to have to change, but it will load, and for the most part, you can just use all your key bindings and stuff from i3 right here in Sway. Now, when I say there are some things that you'll need to change, for example, by default, whether you use this default config or your i3 config, dmenu does not work with Wayland. As far as I can tell, there's no way to get dmenu to work with Wayland. So you have to install something else. So what I've done is sudo app install a program called Wolfi, W-O-F-I, and we'll just let that install. Now, the, what Wolfi is, is basically a Wayland version of Rofi. It's not exactly as good as Rofi, I don't feel, but it will work. There are several other options uh, alternatives that you can use some things called B menu B E M E N U is an, uh, is an option. Uh, there's one called G menu that runs with Wayland. So there's a couple options you can use for your launcher because, like I said, D menu just doesn't work. Now, why in the default configuration file they have D menu here? I don't know. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. It's possible that uh, D menu does work with Wayland and there's a, like a special workaround that you have to do. Uh, but for me, even installing D menu, just like regular installing D menu, couldn't get this to work. Now, I will admit that I didn't go through and build D menu from source like I usually do. I just installed it from the Debian repositories. 
but it didn't work. So I instead use Rofi, so, or Wofi, I should say. So what I'm going to do is actually change this. So I'm going to change to the end of the line here, and I'm going to go to Wolfie dash dash show equals D run, if I can spell. Okay, so we've got that done. I also need to change the default terminal here because I don't know what the foot terminal is. Uh, I kind of want to try it because uh, because I've never heard of it, but it sounds cool uh, just from the name, but I'm going to change this to a uh, kitty, which I actually also have to install. So uh, zoom in here and do sudo apt install kitty. That way I have a default terminal emulator. Uh, you could use any terminal you wanted here. If you wanted to use, uh, I had console, I could have used console, but I'm just going to go ahead and use Kitty. Uh, I would use Alacrity if Alacrity was in the Debian repositories, but it is not for dumb reasons. Uh, but anyways, that way that we have a, an emulator that we can use. Okay, what I also want to do here is at the beginning of this line here, I want to comment this out. And the reason why is because by default, at least the way I've installed this thing, this wallpaper here does not exist. So when you actually go into Sway, you end up getting an error because that file just doesn't exist. So I'm just going to comment it out. I'll show you how to set a wallpaper here in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and comment that out, or uh, get out of insert mode. And that's the last thing we really have to change. And I'll, I'll go through the configuration file a little bit more in depth here in a minute. But I just wanted to get us out of... Uh, plasma and into sway. So I'm going to go ahead and rank quit this and we can go ahead and, and get out of plasma here. We'll log out and we'll wait for MX to log out. This is by far the worst part about MX is the log out here. It seems to get hung up on the conky, but killing the conky, I'm not sure why it does that. It's really weird. Anyways, we'll go ahead and uh, down here at the bottom, switch to Sway Wayland and hit log in. Now, here we go. We're in Sway. Now, if you notice, this looks very similar to i3, and it's meant to. It's literally a fork of i3. So, if you've used i3 before, a lot of the same stuff is, is the same. So, super enter gets us a terminal. Super, like, say we do go super v and do super enter again we get a terminal at the bottom we do super h and then super enter oh, that should have worked super h and then super enter that's still I wonder why that didn't work huh i might have got that that uh key binding wrong that's usually the key binding though super h gets us back into horizontal mode anyway super shift q closes these terminals so we'll actually go find that so we'll zoom in here I'm going to go to cd.config, sway, and then into the config file. All right, so let's go ahead and see what I got wrong there, because it should have worked. We'll go down here to, uh, let's see, split mod B and mod V. So they changed it from mod H to mod B for some reason. So if now if we do mod B and then do enter and then mod V and then enter and then mod B and then enter, it does that thing. Uh, why it spawned there instead of over here, I'm not actually sure, but you get the point. That default key binding threw me off, but it's basically the i3 stuff, just with a little bit different of, of a key binding. So, like I was saying, for the most part, everything you've experienced in i3 will work in space, specifically the stuff with the key bindings. So, you set variables the same way, you set key bindings the same way, bind sim, then the key binding, and then the action, just like you normally would. You also go through, as, as far as I can tell, you can go through and start programs the same way as well. So if we went all the way out here to the bottom and started a thing called, we did something like exec underscore always, and then we're going to be doing this here in a big, in a minute when we, actually we'll go to a different workspace. And let me show you how to set a wallpaper. So we'll open up another terminal and do sudo apt install sway bg. It might already be installed. Sometimes sway installs it. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but if you need to, you can go through and run it this way. And it's already been installed. So what we want to do here is do sway bg dash i. And then we need a, a wallpaper. So here's where Wayland's going to mess up with us, mess with us for the first time. Because let's go here to the, another workspace. And open up, this is Wolfie. It basically looks like Rofi. If we just type in Firefox, 
and hit enter, absolutely nothing happens. Like, nothing happens. And if we get out of this and open up a terminal and zoom in here so you can see Firefox and start Firefox in terminal, which is unable to init server. And that's because by default, Firefox does not work with Wayland. I had no clue this was even a thing. Like. I got into Sway this morning and decided I was going to go find a wallpaper on Wallhaven and couldn't open Firefox. I was like, what? WTF, bro? <laughs> and you know, you're like, so I spent like a like a half an hour Googling it, Googling it, Googling it. And it turns out that you have to set a environment variable in order to get Firefox working in Way Wayland. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that, even though this has very little to do with Sway and mostly just to do with Wayland. I'm not exactly sure why it needs to be like this, but what we need to do is do touch dot p a m underscore e n v i r o n m e n t environment, okay? And then we're going to vim vim into that dot pam environment, and we're going to type in this m o z underscore enable underscore Wayland, and then default equals one, okay? And we're going to right and quit this. Now, you can also put this in uh, Etsy environment. Uh, actually, I think it's CD up a level and them into envi environment. There, there we go. You could also put that here. Uh, the first way worked for me the first time. I, whether or not it'll work for me this time, I don't know. We're going to find out here in a second. But anyways, what I need to do now is get out of this. I'm going to actually quit this without saving because I'm not doing anything with it yet. And I'm going to do sudo reboot. I'm going to reboot the VM here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want that environment variable to take effect. I don't think I actually need to reboot, but I'm just going to do it just to be safe. Okay, we're back. And now if we do super D and go into Firefox, it should load, hopefully. And it does. Uh, as you can see, Rofi didn't or Wolfie did not actually go away. Uh, why it didn't go away, I'm not sure. Uh, that has to be a bug. Okay, but anyways, we're looking for a wallpaper. Uh, we'll look for an MX Linux wallpaper. And images, and let's see. It doesn't really matter which one of these we use. We just want to use one. That's actually kind of cool. That works. So let's see, view image as. Okay, and then save image. And we want to save that into pictures. And save. Now, we can quit Firefox. Close tabs. Open up a terminal. Now we can set a t set a wallpaper. So if we CD into our pictures folder and do an LS, we know we have that wallpaper. We just download it. We do sway, sway bg dash i and then uh, six four like that. Okay. Now as you can see, the wallpaper did get changed, but it's not actually here running, and that's not a great thing. We can actually ch we can fix that kind of by doing the same thing and putting ampersand at the end and that would kind of work it will keep running even if we close the terminal or actually it won't keep running if we keep running open the terminal it did last time i don't know why it didn't this time it doesn't matter because that's not a great way to set a wallpaper anyway so what we're going to do is cd into dot config and then sway and then vim into the configuration file i'm missing my aliases here and then at the end, what well, we're going to see if this works. Th this is the way you do it in i3. So exec underscore always sway bg dash dash i and then tilde slash pictures. And then we need the, the name of that uh, f f CD pictures. And then, LS. and then we'll copy this. Okay, and that should work. We write that. Now, let's see what the key, the key binding for restarting Sway is. There should be a restart Sway key binding here somewhere. Okay, so mod shift C. Mod shift C. Now, if we go to here, and we have a wallpaper. So, it works exactly like it does in i3, which I assumed it did. Okay, so we've set the wallpaper, and now we can go through and change some of these key bindings. So, for example, I want to change the kill command to just super Q. Okay, got that done, and that works. So, mod shift C, now if I do super super Q, that quits it. Okay, good. 
now. Okay, so that's good enough. Now, I love how they've gone through and set these variables for H, J, K, and L to left, down, up, and right. That way, when you go through down here and see the actual key binding, they just use those variables. So, that is cool. All right, I think that's the only key binding that I actually need to change. For me personally, all these rest of these are fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the differences. I can't show you all the differences that are here in practice, simply because most of them have to do with multiple monitors and stuff. So for example, so for example, there's this here. If you have multiple monitors, you'd want to uncomment this and you want to uncomment here and do something like output display port one or whatever your monitor's called and then give it the resolution and the position. So this is where Sway and Wayland do things a little bit differently. And it's really confusing if you don't know what you're doing because if you go into a Xorg based desktop environment or window manager and you do say xrander, just type in xrander in your terminal, it's going to list out all your monitors and it's going to give you the names of the monitors. For me, it's something like this. It looks kind of like this. I'm not sure what the actual names are. I never remember. Uh, but the point is you're going to get names in xrander and they're gonna, those are the names you're going to be using to set the, the, the resolution and all that stuff. If you do the same thing here, so if we go here and do something like this, sway msg, msg mat, and then dash t, and then get underscore, underscore outputs, and do this. This is also going to give you the name of your monitors. The problem comes is that you'll find that the monitor names are different. Uh, or at least they were for me. Like, they're, they're completely different. And it's not showing here in the virtual machine. But when I installed this on hardware, the names were completely different. So it really messed with my brain for a little while because I, I didn't go through and run this first. I went right here and used the same names that X render gave me and did this thing, right? You know, I went through and did this resolution. If I could spell 1920 by 1080 and position uh, 0, 1920. Uh, and I did that and it did not work, right? Because the names were different. Now, that's one problem. The other issue is that you have to get these positions right. You're going to have to toy these. There is documentation on how to do that. Uh, and I will link to that in the video description. But it's not so hard if all of your monitors are the exact same resolution. But if they're not, it can get messy. So uh, anyways, that's how you go through and set up the multiple monitors. And how you get, tell Sway where those monitors are. So you have monitor 1, monitor 2, or whatever you have. Um, that's how you go through and do that. And it's totally different from how i3 does this because i3 doesn't handle this monitor stuff at all. That That's always going to be an Xorg job, right? That's how it works. You do, When you need to set the position of your monitors, the resolution of your monitors, you deal with Xorg, whether that's through a GUI or through Xrander or Arander, however you do it. i3 has nothing to do with it. But Sway manages that, is that here like this. Now... If you've ever used, used Herp's Luff WM, you'll see that this is very familiar to you because this is exactly how Herp's Luff does it. So, or similar to it at least. So if you've used that before, you'll at least know what's going on here. If you've, For me, I'd only briefly taken a look at Herp's Luff and hadn't really ever messed around with it with multiple monitors. So it didn't really matter. You know, I never experienced this before. And this was very confusing for me to the first round, especially the names, right? So always run, always run this output here if you have multiple monitors, and get those names so that you know that they're right, okay? So that's how you deal with multiple monitors. And we'll go back through at the beginning here and uh, comment those back out because I don't need to mess around with it because because I'm in a, a virtual machine. So I don't, I'm not messing around with w multiple window managers. The other thing that's different is you'll also notice that the configuration file also handles things like how your monitors go to sleep. It also handles how your input is 
work with your touch pads and your mouse and stuff like that. It's all done from this configuration file. It's so super weird. Like, I'm assuming it's because Wayland doesn't have this stuff built out yet. Like, it's not something that works or they haven't figured out GUIs or other you know, ways of managing this stuff that Sway had, or at least at the beginning, Sway had to go through and do this stuff, you know, for themselves. And maybe they just haven't taken it out yet, or maybe that stuff still doesn't exist in Wayland. I'm not sure. But all that stuff is done right here in the configuration file. The last thing that's different is the bar. Now, the bar is where I have the least experience, and basically this is the first time I'm looking at it. So the bar is not your typical i3 status bar or i3 bar or i3 blocks. It's none of those things. It's basically a while loop. As far as I can tell, that's exactly how uh, they do their bar here. So we can actually see the status command while date is this, do sleep one, done. It's a while loop. So if we go into a number, another terminal here and do man sway, if I can spell, and we go down here at the bottom, we can actually see that we can find another man page. So sway bar. So what we're going to want to do is do quit man sway dash bar. And we have another man, man page here. So this is not as great. So like, I have a lot of problems with the standard stock i3 bar. I never use it. It's pedestrian at best. You can't do a ton of stuff with it. Like, Polybar is just superior in almost every way, in my opinion. However, compared to this, i3 bar and i3 status and i3 box are just so much better because you don't have to deal with a ton of complicated stuff. And a lot of people don't know how to use a while loop. Like, a lot of people don't know how to use it. It's going to confuse the crap out of them. Now, most of those people aren't going to go through and try Sway, so it's not a big deal. But it's just something to keep in mind. So to do a lot of this stuff here, you're going to have to go through and look at how Sway Bar is meant to be, you know, used. And the problem here is that there's no examples, okay? This is... A lot of times with man pages, the really good man pages, they'll give you examples of how things are worked, of how things work. And that's not the case here. If we go back to the top, there's no real good example here of how things are supposed to be structured. Like, it doesn't say anything really about that while loop at all. Are you supposed to put these options inside the while loop? Are you supposed to execute things like sway bar dash these options? Where do you put these options? It, it Even at the top here, like usually if we do like a, if we, in, in a normal man page when you're looking at a command, so if we go to another work terminal here and zoom in and do man ls, we get a way of using this. So this is how you, you the command and then the option and then the file, right? That's how you do it. In Sway, the description is just, you know, a description. It doesn't actually say how you're supposed to execute it. And for the, I mean, for, for the most part, I found that the Sway documentation is actually really good. Especially the stuff on their GitHub and their Wiki. It's actually really good. They go through and list out a whole bunch of programs that you'll need in order to replace very popular uh, XORG applications. Things like Fay, Things like Dmenu. Things like Scrot. Things like PyCon. Things, things like XClip. You know, all this stuff, you know, they have a list of stuff of alternatives that you need to use, right? And they have a great guide on migrating from i3 to Sway. The documentation there is good. But when it comes to the bar, the bar documentation is subpar. It's not great. And the thing is, I have no clue what to do about it, right? I don't, there's not a lot here. Like, I could go... I've gone through and I've read most of the stuff, but without an example, like I'm, I'm very much a C what needs to happen in, in order to follow the instructions because it just is just the way I learn. And there's no examples here and it's kind of infuriating. So we're not going to be messing with the bar at all today. Now, so we've talked a little bit now about Sway. What I want to do now is, and we, you know, we've configured some of the key bindings, and I've shown you the stuff that this is the same on i3, and the same that some of the things that are different than i3, and we set a wallpaper. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of ricing uh, outside of the bar. 
at least in terms of modules for the bar. We might be able to change some, some of the colors. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's quit this and go back here. And let's just go to here, uh, go to here and open up a Firefox. I also don't know why Wolfie doesn't go away. Uh, maybe you, it, maybe Wolfie is not the best solution. Uh, I'd probably have to go through an experiment with some of the other options for menus. But obviously, uh, it has some bugs. So let's go ahead and... Uh, what color scheme should we use? Let's go ahead and just do Grubbox. I know that Grubbox has all the color codes right here. So um, let's go ahead and move this to 1. And we'll scroll down here. All right, And then the background here change this to 282828 and I'm assuming the status line is going to be the front color so we'll change this to FBF1C7 oops that was the wrong 7 now if we restart yeah that worked okay and then let's see here so that changes that now I always forget what the way to disable the title bar in i3 is it's not what you think it is so dis disable i3 title bar because you have to set something to zero this is the one you do it this right here okay we'll copy this and go up here to the top and go down here where are the rules i guess it doesn't really matter we'll just put it here for now Okay, and then we'll write this. We may have to change that to zero and get rid of that. And they're still there. So change this to zero. And they're actually still there. Uh, so that, that usually works. That's usually what works for me to get rid of the title bars. But that didn't work this time. That's uh, this is a way to completely disable. Come on, Reddit. Yeah, that's exactly what we have. But it didn't work. I wonder if that has something to do with Wayland. All right, well, you want to know it doesn't matter. We'll go to i 3 winmanororg because there's something here we need. So we'll go to docs and user guide and then search for colors. If I can spell colors right. Here we go. This is what we need. I'm going to copy this. There we go. Now, what we can see is if this actually go through, goes through and works. Because this is the, obviously we're getting this from I3. So the border for focused should be, why did I close Firefox earlier? Because I had I had my Grubbox th theme there. I, and I closed it like a dumbass. Somebody told me that this is not pronounced Grubbox, it's called Groovebox. I, I'm just gonna call it Grubbox because uh, that's the way I've always pronounced it. All right, here we go. Now, let's see. The border should be like, let's just make it, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. FB 4934. 4934. Okay. And then the key bindings are messing me up. I didn't quit at that time. I just moved it to another workspace. All right, let's see what that did. That, that changed the border color around the title bar. Not around the whole window, around the bar. So I think we're going to need to go through and do it here as well. So FB4934, 4934. Okay. And background B8, BB26. Oh, that looks really. Per we did get the. <laughs> I don't think green's gonna work. Change this to something different. Let's change it to that blue. Eight three A. A. Five. Nine eight. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Um, I wish I could get rid of the title bars completely. I don't know why the normal trick isn't working. Then almost has to be something to do with Wayland. Um, why that would be different, though, I don't know. Let's see. I'm just curious. If we, oh, you want to? It is what Wayland. Because look, normally to get the class, you do something like xprop, right? But xprop doesn't work in Wayland because that's an xorg application. So 
if that's different, it's almost certain that the classes are damned different too. A few moments later. Okay, well, obviously there's no way to get rid of those title bars. Anyways, so there's not much racing that we did here, but we did something, at least, to give you an idea of how it would go about the process. And uh, I think my next task, and I'm going to do this after I'm done with this video, is go through and try to figure out how those modules would work if I wanted to add things to the bar. And obviously, you'd change the colors for the bar here at the bottom. You'd do it here in the inactive workspace. Although, why it would be inactive workspaces, not the active workspace, I'm not exactly sure. Again, you'd have to read the man, man page and hope that it would give you some ideas. Okay, so that is Sway Window Manager. And I know this video was like super long. The unedited time runtime of this video is almost an hour. So I'm hoping that in editing I can get some of this stuff out. I'm sure I can. Uh, so that's not quite so uh, obnoxiously long. But I wanted to go through and take a good gander throughout Sway Window Manager and get a good just first impression of it. So I've now used it for a few hours. Like I, I used it for a little while in 1VM and then I did this hour long thing with you guys. And I have some initial thoughts. If you need to use Wayland, this is a good option. I'm glad it exists. I can't say and I can't speak to whether or not this would be a stable thing to do because I'm not sure and I'm not convinced that Wayland is ready for prime time yet because every experience I've ever had with Wayland has been a negative one, especially on hardware. So whether or not you install this and have a good time, whether or not you install this and, and find that there are things that just won't work, for example, removing the title bars doesn't seem to work and sway the same way it does in i3. Finding class names doesn't seem to be even possible in Wayland or at least from the brief bit of research that I did doesn't seem to be possible. So there's going to be some things that just aren't going to work. Now, especially like things like OBS and simple screen recorder and all this stuff, the video capture stuff that I use on a daily basis to make videos doesn't work well in Wayland. So my experience on that end also hasn't been very good. So whether or not you have a good experience with Wayland is probably very much going to depend on what you do with your computer. Because for a lot of things, Wayland just isn't there yet. So I do think it's good that Sway exists. Because, like it or not, Wayland's the future. It is. Uh, someday, Wayland is going to be the primary display server for Linux. It's just going to be that way. Ubuntu already uses it by default. Fedora uses it by default. We're going to have more and more distros shipping with Wayland as the default display server or whatever it's called. And it's just going to happen one day and Xorg is going to be relegated to the, you know, the minority. It's going to be the thing that people use only when they have to. Everybody else is just going to use Wayland. It's going to, I mean, the vast majority of Linux users never interact with Xorg at all. Really, I mean, like the settings of Xorg, it's just something that runs in the background and makes their computer run. They never think of it. Wayland will someday become that. Uh, and we're, it's rapidly approaching. And the thing about it is, is there, not a, there are not a ton of Wayland-specific or Wayland-supported window managers. There's just not. There's Sway, there's River, there's a couple other ones that are, are Wayland-specific, but they're very, very niche. And they're not well-developed. None of them are well-developed. There's a fork of uh, DWM that, as far as I know, is not still developed. I might be wrong about that, but it's not popular because everybody just uses DWM. For someone who likes tiling window managers, that's a little scary because I want to keep using window managers. And if at some point Xorg becomes just vastly unsupported and insecure and all this stuff even more than it is now, what's going to happen to our beloved window manager? So it's a good thing that things like Sway exist, because so, hopefully it will kickstart other Tile and Wind managers to get started on supporting Wayland. I know Qtile is very rapidly getting there. They might have actually already have an implementation of it. I know X, uh, Xmonad is working on an implementation of a Wayland version for them. So hopefully we start seeing the guys behind their Sucla software start working on Wayland as well. Somehow I doubt it. Uh, we haven't had an update to DWM since 2018 or 2019, something like that. It's been quite a while since 
six point two was re was released. It might have even been longer than that. So uh, whether or not DWM ever gets updated for Wayland or, or a fork of it that is actually popular happens, I don't know. So I'm glad that Sway exists. Would I use it? No, mostly because the video recording stuff that I need doesn't work well in Wayland. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it wasn't too long. If you made it all the way to the end, seriously, thank you. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you like, if there's anybody still watching this at the end, um, I'd just be astonished if there is. But anyways, thank you guys, everybody, for watching. You can leave a comment in the comment section below letting me know if you ever tried Sway, if you want to try Sway, if you ever had a very good experience with Wayland, you can do so. You can let me know in the comment section below. You can make sh you can follow me on Twitter. At the Linux cast, this video has been going for so long, the words are just, blah, blah, blah. you know, uh, follow me on Twitter at the Linux cast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linux cast before I go and finally get off from this video. I need to thank my current patrons, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Evan Tools, Steve A, Sid A, Mitchell, Art Center, Emma, Teus, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, the BSDs, Rock, and Peter A. Thanks everybody for watching. See you next time.